According to ancient Aztec priests, the god Tlaloc required continuous human sacrifice. If these sacrifices were not made, the rain would stop and the crops would die. But Tlaloc especially needed child sacrifice. And it was not enough to wet the earth with the blood of children. Tlaloc also required their tears. If the sacrificial children did not cry enough, the priests would pull out their teeth or their nails to ensure maximum screams of pain before ritually sacrificing them. There is a sacred ritual described in Hindu scripture that's so vulgar that Hindu scholars refuse to translate it. Later, Western academics like Wendy Doniger have provided full translations of the Hindu sacred Veda scriptures that describe this shocking fertility ritual called the Ashvamedha. We will describe the ritual for you now along with direct quotes from the scriptures, but viewer discretion is advised. The ritual begins when a horse is suffocated to death. The king and his four queens walk around the dead horse chanting prayers. The chief queen recites, O oh horse, you are protector of the community on the basis of your good qualities. You are the protector of happiness. O oh horse, you have become my husband. When the prayer is complete, the chief queen lies down next to the horse. As the priests observe, she pulls the dead horse's genitalia and puts it into her own. She then recites the sacred prayer, This horse may release semen into me. The king then recites another sacred prayer, O oh horse, please throw semen on the upper part of the anus of my wife. Expand your penis and insert it in the vagina. According to the Harivamsa Purana, the Hindu god Indra eventually enters the body of the dead horse to have intercourse with the queen as the king watches. The ritual is complete after the queen spends the whole night with the dead horse's genitalia inside her, thus ensuring fertility for the Hindu kingdom. In one instance, the mother of Rama is also reported to have participated in this special ritual. You might think that this is a marginal practice in Hinduism, but many sacred Hindu temples, such as the Khajuraho temple in India, depict these acts of bestiality and group sex on their holy walls. Now you could say that all religions are the same, but what other religions involve child sacrifice and dead horse bestiality? These are shocking examples, but there's a deeper underlying truth here. Religions that involve bestiality, human sacrifice, and child torture are all polytheistic. Why is polytheism conducive to these practices?